introduce you as since you do so many things. What are you at Comic Con for at the moment? At Comic Con, because I'm managing the VidFest area, mm -hmm. but in my day job, I'm a producer. Right, okay. So your show has a table also for the weekend, but what's happening with your production, so the production area of your job? So yeah, I've produced film, I've produced short films and web series and live streams. Um, just finished I Be From Den, which is a zombie movie. And um, just sort of gearing up for the next productions, really. I've done about three short films this year already. Wow. Um, 2016. Um, because I'm now, as a producer, a lot of new first time directors are coming to me and asking me to produce their films as well. You know, because they want someone fairly experienced doing it because they're, they're, they want to make them slightly better budgets than the average look short film. Of course, yeah, yeah. So, vid, but VidFest, I, I've known you for doing VidFest for like the last five years. Yeah. So VidFest is really just our show here at the MCM Comic Con. MCM Comic Con is doing, you know, video games, TV, movies, anime, all sorts of different pop culture stuff. And then they added online video, YouTube, web series as another section which was branded Bidfest. Sure, sure. So yeah, they've asked me to help manage it, find people who want to exhibit here, put together a program. We have various stages around MCM. We've got you know gold stage, platinum stage, we've got the gaming stage and Japan Pop Asia stage. We have a Bidfest stage and I program the panels for the Bidfest stage. Okay, so you get to choose who comes to have a table and who gets to show their stuff. You also run the great big poofy pavilion thing over there with all yeah, the, the big dome. The big dome with the with the uh, panels that happen. Exactly. How, how do you kind of choose what topics to do or what's current? Well, I mean, mo most, of the, most of the panels are taken up by those who've actually come as exhibitors at Bidfest. So they've, they've, they've either booked a table or a booth, mm -hmm. you know, a stall, and that they're either promoting their show or their channel, or they're actually also selling some merchandise to go along with, 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 their, with their YouTube channel. And so a lot of the panels are really made up of, of, the, of the exhibitors. And then we, then we sort of fill in the gaps and see what else we could do. And so I do a mix of maybe some educational panels, um, you know, directing crowdfunding or VR and music, uh, writing, you know, just to try, because obviously a lot of young people today, you know, they're, they're fans of not just TV shows and movies, but they are fans of YouTube and YouTubing, but they all want to do it themselves as well. So to mix in a few education panels to hopefully help them yeah. be inspired and yeah. get out there making some stuff. Yeah. It's great. So we do that as well. So what was your first sort of lean towards like digital entertainment and that kind of relationship there? So it seems to be growing now, but I mean, Back in the day when it was a brand new thing, what was it that inspired you? Well, when I first, I mean, I come from a film background, a more traditional film background, I guess, an independent film background, and that's primarily still what I do. You know, when I first got into uh, really knowing about YouTube and YouTubers and, and web series, it was really when I was reviewing shows on uh, a live stream show I did on YouTube called Those Video Guys. And uh, so I'd watch a lot of stuff and review it and, you know, wanted them to, to produce my own stuff. And so, you know, when Lisa was writing Threesome as a play, um, uh, um, you know, it was like, well, why don't we do a, a web series to go with the play as well? And, and so that's how that came about. And, and, big, and, and so it's sort of the love of web series and, and to make the stuff online really grew from all that. Yeah. You know, and that's how Raindance ended up happening as well. And pitching to Raindance Film Festival say, look, you know, I've noticed because I've now not just watching but in being in, in touch with a lot of creators of web series, mm -hmm. I've noticed to me independent filmmakers and independent web series creators are pretty much the same type of person. Yeah. It's an entrepreneurial filmmaker who's got an idea goes out there, writes it, and makes it the way they can make it. Yeah. With whatever budget they can make it, in, in 
in whatever way they can make it. And, and that is a lot closer to film than, let's say, television, which web series resembles television, but in the TV world is much more formal. You know, you pitch an idea to a broadcaster, and the broadcaster develops it, and then they commission a series. And so it's a much, it's a much more bureaucratic process. Okay. But because web series isn't that, yeah, it's much more like an indie film, where you just go out there, you have your idea, and you go out and make it. Yeah, yeah. Is that does it still make you really excited to be? So that's what that, it, absolutely. That's what makes yeah. it exciting. That's because you can do it that way. And that's why I thought, well, Rain Dance, you should also be showing web series at a film festival because the filmmakers of web series are the same people as the filmmakers of film, indie yeah. films, yeah. short films. Yeah, that's fantastic. So what is it that you've got on the horizon now? What's your next big adventure? Um, next big adventure, well, we've got a web series shooting over the summer. I'm working with a writer, director called James Moran. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, some people is. know him because he's, he's, he's written for Torchwood and Doctor Who mm -hmm, before, mm -hmm. uh, as well as uh, working on various other BBC shows. And so he's, he has a project development, I'll be working with him on that. And we hope to be shooting in the summer and maybe by October, VidFest, we'll be able to present it to, to the audience. Fantastic. That's very, very cool. As I would consider you the hub of all things VidFest, Vid video, online content you know, digital creators, guru of awesomeness. What is it that you would say sort of in like one sentence that would be like the future of online content? It's unpredictable. <laughs> I love that. It's very demographic of you. <laughs> it's unpredictable, you know. I mean, who, you know, we had a, a, a panel earlier today with the, the guys who've made a, a police thriller on Instagram. Yeah. You know, that to me, you wouldn't think that that's the natural home for it, but they've done it. They've done mm. 15 second episodes, and, and it's exciting and it's fun, and it's like. So it's that kind of experimentation that makes what could happen. But then we don't know. You know, there's, there's every, every day you're reading someone setting up a new, new channel here, or they're setting up a new platform there, or there's going to be a new social network, this is going to do that, and that social network. Uh, and it's, you know, it's up to us as, as, as creators or producers to think about well, how do we utilize all this new technology that mm. comes up, new ways to communicate to an audience and, and integrate that into a storytelling process and still tell a story effectively. Yeah, you know? yeah. So and that's why it's unpredictable, because it's up to us to, to jump to that challenge. Yeah, keep fighting the good fight, right? <laughs> Just keep fighting the good fight, but still keep telling, always, always remember your You've got to tell a story, mm. whatever way you're doing it, you yeah. know, and that applies to documentary and non-fiction just as much as to descriptive. Yeah, Keep, make sure that the story is there and yeah. then the audience will follow it. So, yeah. Yeah. That's very cool. Thank you very much for your time. You're very welcome.